Recon sequence aborted. Reinitializing facility. Shooter side at a checkpoint, Maxwell. We use some reinforcements over here. Trepang 2 is a first-person shooter with horror elements that follows Subject 106 as they escape captivity and take on the Horizon Corporation. The game is available on Steam. Atmosphere for the most part, the atmosphere isn't present during the fast and frantic gun battles that Subject 106 gets caught up in, though there are some cases where the horror of watching people being set on fire hits an unsettling realisation at the mental state of the cult that you're battling. Outside the chaotic combat, the game does adopt stealth as an option and there's some tension as you sneak around cloaked on higher difficulties. But when the game quiets down, there's an eerie silence to it. The tonal change is unmistakable and the game almost becomes creepy in these moments of unnerving quiet. There's a small feeling of apprehension as isolation kicks in and dread builds now that you're up against things you don't understand. Some of the later missions have the uncanny feeling that you're being watched and messed with, but this is really as deep as it goes. Though sadly for the vast majority of the game, the atmosphere isn't really noticeable at all and the combat really takes centre stage for the experience, but it does have some small moments. That's no Harry Mason's. Scares. The game has a few jump scares here and there and some unsettling scripted events and they work surprisingly well but only because they're so far in between each other because of the sheer amount of combat. It makes you feel out of your depth and vulnerable for the first time in the game and it works quite well because there's so little of it. But ultimately the problem is that it's difficult to praise the game for being scary in small amounts when it's very, very small parts of the game. That's still no Harry Mason's. Sound design. The game's soundtrack consists mostly of fast, heavy combat music like something you'd hear in Doom, and eerie ambient drones that are just accentuated hisses, white noise that almost seems to amplify the feeling of silence. The sound effects are incredible with the immensely powerful gun noises reflecting off the reverb of the environments that are to sound what your visuals are to your eyes, a cacophony of wondrous carnage and excess. When the horror creeps in, the laughing sound effects and various unsettling noises the game plays work wonders to enhance those brief moments of the game. There's voice acting and the voices are distinct enough that you can tell which of the armor clad soldiers is talking to you from tone alone, and the voice acting for the most part is pretty great. The sound design is very loud and chaotic, but leaves an unnerving hole when the bullets stop flying. That's one Harry Mason. Gore. The gore is pretty spectacular when combined with the slow motion mechanics, with blood splatters flowering outward explosively, and you get to dance between the splatters like raindrops. Subject 106 gets covered in blood from the relentless shooting, and there's some really realistic puddles and smears, along with other unpleasant things exquisitely detailed. The gore is over the top, but there's occasions where it's realistic too, and it fits both scenarios seamlessly. That's two Harry Masons. It looks like a security lockdown is in effect. We need to find a way to disable it. Scares. 
story. The story follows Subject 106 as they break free of captivity and take on various important people in uncovering the Horizon Corporation's sinister research. Besides the dialogue from various team members and antagonists, some aspects of the story are told through database entries, and for the more horror-focused sections, these were pretty interesting, but it always felt segmented. The problem with intel items being scattered about a war zone is they're not what the player is really focused on. The story themes follows very familiar tropes of being used and corporate lies, but really the game's story can be largely ignored in favour of the gameplay, and the experience won't change a great deal, making the final score 3 out of 5 Harry Masons. Trepang 2 is an incredible shooter that was an absolute pleasure to play, and its horror elements were nice, but they're only around 10% of the actual game. For something that's heralded as the spiritual sequel to the Fear franchise, it's improved on the combat, but really only dipped its toes into the horror. Again, I'd like to remind you the whole thing is down to my opinion in horror games, and if you don't share this opinion, then that's cool. I get it. I'd like to point out that whilst I killed an ungodly number of people, I did not lose myself and advise you don't either. There'll be more horror reviews in the pipeline, and thanks for watching. Now let's go check out Bumps in the middle of the night. Peace.